So a relative asked me to 3D print this sword model. And I'm like, I don't think it's going to look like that when I get done with it. But I wanted to see what this model looked like. And um, it turns out this model is already pre-cut into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pieces, right? The handle, two parts around the guard, and then four pieces for the blade. And you can do a three-piece blade or a four-piece blade, depending on the length of your, how, you know, how big your printer is. Um, and so I looked at this and I thought it was really cool. And it was interesting because the way they did this, they did it with this alignment hex at the top. So the model already came with an alignment hex and you can print these uh, like washer, I mean, uh, like nut looking things to fit in there. And I realized that actually Prusa Slicer could do that for me and make super tight fit, right? So there, it would take into account the Prusa printer and it would take into account the tolerance of that and I could get some really nice if I wanted to. And also, if I look at the way the hex nut is in this, I think the hex should be turned a little bit, at least according to the way the picture's done. Um, so if we go and look at what this thing comes with, right? It actually came with a full size printer. Uh, it came with two sizes for this. So we have one of three, two of three, three of three, and the top, or we do blade bottom, mid, and top. So if you have a bigger printer, you only have three pieces. And if you have a smaller printer, you've got t uh, four pieces. One, one of three, two of three, three of three, and then the top. And then in the mid, these two are together. And if you look at it, you can't quite see it here, but I'll pull it up in a minute. These are actually split and they have one of these alignment nuts and we print out a whole bunch of these alignment nuts to make these things line up. So what I decided I wanna do is I wanna rejoin these parts together. So in this case, I'm gonna take the blade top, the blade bottom and the blade mid, and I'm gonna join them back together and fill in the nut holes. And then I'm gonna use Prusa Slicer to actually slice those and uh, it will generate the hex pieces that are really snug that fit taken into account the printer, um, the printer uh, uh, tolerances, right? And then I got to decide what I'm going to do with these two. I could join them. I think I'm going to do the same thing here. The way this works, these have three nuts. Um, these two join together and they have an alignment nut. And then there's an alignment nut on the top, alignment nut on the bottom. And that aligns the handle and it aligns the blade. So I think what I'm going to do is join these three blades together, see if I can do it in Prusa Slicer. And then if that works, I'll re-slice them and use the slice, the, I'll re-split them using Prusa Slicer. And then I'm going to do the same thing with these pieces. And then I don't know what I'm going to do with the handle. I, maybe I'll just leave it the way it is. But I, I feel like these are kind of short and uh, they could go deeper and be tighter tolerance. And that way we would get a force fit, we could glue it, and we would have enough material there. It would look pretty good. So let's see what we can do about that. So it turns out uh, what I want to do first is join these together and I'm going to actually use Microsoft 3D Builder for this because it's the easiest. So if I do uh, add, I can say load an object. I am actually going to pick uh, bottom and then I'm going to pick add load object the middle part. And then I'm going to take everything that's here and I'm going to flip them upside down. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to take these two and merge them. So if we do object, edit, merge. We now have one object here. You can see we have one. Um, and then we're going to insert, add the tip. So we had three parts to this and we're going to load the blade top and play with it. Make sure we're doing the right thing. So it looks pretty good. So, I mean, we're going to ignore for a moment that there's a hex on the bottom of this that was the um, the fitting nut that the other guy used. And I think what we'll try and do is maybe we'll make a bigger fit for this or something. I don't know. I don't really like how shallow this is. It should be a lot deeper. 
Um, so we could measure it and we could make it a lot deeper and then we could, but you know what, let's just play with what we got right now. Okay, so if what we have is three blades sitting next to each other now. And what I wanna do is flip this thing 180 degrees. And then I wanna settle this on the object settle. And I'll say yes. And so in theory, I have one big blade uh, that is all smooth and it, you know, I mean, if I look at the wire frame for this, we might have an issue. It doesn't look too bad, right? We can see that it was built in sections. Um, we can do an x-ray, which I always get confused what that does. See, nothing changed. So, um, all right, so that looks pretty good, right? And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna save this, save as, I'm actually gonna replace a previous one. Yes. Okay, so we're gonna import that image into Prusa Slicer, which I've actually done a couple of times here. So one of the things I'm not super, one of the things I'm not super keen here is sometimes you can end up with a different number of objects. Like we only see one object here in this, and if I save it, it looks like one object. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over and import this in here. When I import it, it actually says several objects at multiple heights, should they be loaded as a single object with multiple parts? And my answer is always yes in this. So it's a little weird, like why these two, you know, uh, are that way. So let's just make sure that they're good. Okay. So it's outside the printing area. Everything above this is outside the printing area. I have 170 for a printing area. What I could do here is pick, put a cut at 170, right? Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut them from the top. I'm going to make the tip as long as possible. Um, and not be a tiny section because it's the part that looks cool. So if we do 650 uh, minus 170, 650 minus 170, that would be 480. So what I'm going to do, I actually have 180 millimeters, so we're going to pick it at 170. So we're going to make this a four cut at 480. So I'm going to cut this and we can see what's happening here. We're going to make it at 480. We could pick a dovetail cut. So that's kind of an interesting cut. I think maybe I'll try that and that way I won't have to do plugs, right? So I have two options here. I can do a planar cut and then I can add connectors, right? So that that would be post sticking out of this. The other option is to go, um, uh, to go with a dovetail cut. So that would, that'll give me a great strength fit maybe, right? Um, but the question is how wide is it going to be? And I think the answer here is probably going to be like, let's make it something like that, right? We want, if we look at that, that looks pretty good. We want to make sure we have enough strength still. So let's make it 10, 10 wide. Right. And that looks like that's going to leave us enough strength. Um, but we're counting on the nice thing is we can just slide fit this and we, I don't know if you can see it, but we are just going to slide fit it. And so we're going to make the flap angle, the groove angle, and the depth is 12. We could make it deeper and change the angle. I think I'm okay with this. So I'm going to perform the cut. So we're going to make this thing be 12. and we're gonna make the width and we're gonna make the angle be that. We could make it like 45. No, we're not gonna do that. Let's make it 60, 60. So that looks pretty good. So all I'm gonna do is say perform the cut. So we did 12 millimeter, 10 millimeter. Make the cut, right? And we can see, you know, maybe I should have made it a little narrower, maybe made the angle a little steeper uh, to make this work, but I guess I'm gonna glue it anyway. You know, I, let's make it 75. So let's undo this. So we're gonna make a cut. We're gonna make it at 480. We're gonna make this thing at 70. 
I got 65. So a little less slope. That's going to give us right um, more material, hopefully in both places. Looking at it, it's probably about right. So we're going to do 12, 10, and 65. We perform the cut. 12, 10, and 65. So let's do 12. Um, well, I should take a note, but let's do it anyway. All right, 12, 10, and 65. 12, 10, and 65. And now we're going to look at the length of this guy again. And we're going to, and you can see that this is going to fit, right? This is 180 on the build on the light blue. And we got the green part here at 170. It looks like it's going to fit. The blue's height is 486. We're going to knock out 170 out of 486. So that would be 316, 316. So we're going to do another cut on this guy with um, not that one, this one, 316. We're going to use the same dovetail 65 degrees, and we're going to make the depth be 10, 12. Um, we're going to type it in, and we're going to make the width be 10. And we made the cut at 65. And if we look at it, we can see this cut going in there. And I think that looks pretty good. And so we got that. So now we have the this tip that was cut with a dovetail and we've got this dovetail. And now we're gonna cut this baby one more time. And we hit me one more time. And, and we're gonna see what we can do here. So we're gonna do this one here. Uh, the height now is 322 um, and we're gonna do a cut on it. And we're going to do 322 minus 170. So that would be uh, 152, I think. 152. So we're going to make this guy at 152. That looks pretty good. And then we're going to uh, do the dovetail cut again. So right now it's still a dovetail. Uh, we're going to change this to be 12. We're going to change this one to be 10. And we're going to change this one to be 65. And we're going to cut it. And we look, they're all inside the build area. That looks pretty good. We're going to need some raft and spacers. And so um, we could flip these over, right? But I think we're okay with a little uh, roughness on the bottom of these with supports um, because they're all going to be fitted together. So I just decided to do this as a dovetail. And I will, and the bottom has still got the hex nut piece, right? So we didn't fix that. Um, and what we should do, so you can see the dovetails here, right? Um, and so what we're going to do is I'm going to go print this, right? So I'm sitting here thinking about this. It doesn't look very stable if we G code it, generate the G code. We can see we have stability issues. This is not a shocker at this point, right? Um, so what we at the very least, like just looking at these, we know we're going to need a support material on the build plate and we know we're going to want a brim. Let's and the brim will maybe make some of that work. Let's look at it. That just does not look like enough to me that. Oh, you can see a little bit here, right? So I actually kind of like the organic supports better, but I think for this, it'll be fine. We don't see any complaints about this. So now we have a long sword blade and it's pretty long. Uh, four pieces. I'm going to go print this out and see what it looks like. The only thing I'm really not super excited about is we have this shallow and I really, if this thing was deeper, um, then we would be able to make a long plug for this and put it in and the plug would actually be structural and not just alignment. Right. So that's, this is actually one of the things I don't like about this uh, model. And so, you know what, I don't think I have a way to pick this up, but we'll try it. Right, we're going to go print this thing and that'll be that. So these dovetails work great and they didn't work. And that's on me because I didn't pay attention. So the good news is you can see this is actually two of the pieces here. And because I'd saved all the dovetails, uh, the same size, it didn't really matter. And so I created this dagger out of this by accident, made that knife chip and shatter. Um, and it looks pretty cool. Um, and they fit really well. And if you glue them, they'll be pretty solid. Uh, 
And you can see here I used some silk filament and I dried it for the previous run, but I needed to re-dry it for this run. That stuff gets moisture like crazy. I don't know what's in it to give it that fancy finish, but you always end up with this stringing if you don't do it dry. Um, so that part works pretty well. Um, you know, you can see uh, we it, it printed really stably with the um, brim on it, right? So um, wh where was the problem though? It turns out uh, that I did this 15% with standard infill and these little pieces are super structural, right? Like all the strength of the unit needs to be in here. And it turns out we really probably needed to be super high density, at least in these sections around the top and the bottom. Um, and you can see that, especially here in the bottom corner, these little pieces, I tried to make those uh, 65 degrees. I probably should have made them like 80 um, because I, the glue would probably take care of the dovetail strength that I needed. And you can see here, because I did 15% with the standard perimeters, uh, that just did not work at all, right? And these guys just snapped right off. And that's because there's no fill behind them and there's not enough uh, perimeter strength. So I'm probably going to retry this again uh, with a different fill to see what it comes out like. Even the fat piece here, um, so these just popped right off. Um, this one, I went and grabbed it with a little pair of pliers and popped it right off. And that's because, as you can see, there's no strength coming up into the side of the dovetail here. So I think this is probably intended. You know what? I'm going to try this with a higher infill. This claims to be 15. I don't know why they call this 15. It looks more like five. So if I were to do like a 25 percent infill or maybe set it up so that we end up with way more perimeter, uh, I'm going to set it up with more perimeters and see if it's more solid. Um, but that's it. I just wanted to show that this thing actually works. Um, and depending on kind of the strength, you got to look at what you do for infill and the infill pattern here. I'm probably going to go with a gyroid or, uh, yeah, probably that or something else that puts, um, I'll, even though it's, you know, that gives you an effective higher infill by giving us more strength. So that's it. I hope, um, you know, you got to watch when you use the dovetails. Uh, there's also some other pins, but the main point was that the Prusser Slicer gives you some options for cutting pieces up and doing what you want. A lot of people do those pins and, uh, um, well, like, there's like three of them, snaps. And that's because uh, they want a very clean line. In my case, I ended up with not a clean line because I went with a dovetail for something that I thought would be more strength. And it might be if I did it right.